the Ohio State Buckeyes. Last year was a disappointment. 11-2 and two for Ryan Day and that bunch at this point with the way that they have been recruiting. That's a disappointment. There's no other way around it. You can't sugarcoat it in any which way. They went 6-6-1 six, six, and one against the spread, and of course you're going to do that whenever you've got these massive lines that you're trying to cover. But, you know, it's just it's rough to look at. No, it's not anybody's God-given right to win 10 ball games a year. It's not anybody's God-given right to win every conference championship. But when you recruit at the level that Ohio State does, yeah, 10-2 and two in the regular season and not even making it to the title game is definitely going to leave a bad taste in your mouth. So I, I think everybody kind of assumed that they were past that once Urban Meyer left. But every now and then, you know, it's going to rear its ugly head. It is what it is. Post-game win expectancy last year was 9.21 and 2.79. So the stats would read basically that this team was 9-3 and three as opposed to 10-2. and two. And yeah, there were, there were some spots where they just did not look great last year, for sure. Uh, projected SP Plus record this year is 10.5 and, and 1.5. And so anywhere from 10-2 and two to 11-1, and one, is what Bill Conley's stats expect over at ESPN. I expect a little more out of that. Now, the way that those stats work is your win probability in each game, right? And you just add all of those up. I, I'm looking at it a little bit differently. I don't, spoiler alert, I don't see a loss on the schedule anywhere. We'll start off with the offense. The offense here returns 72% of production. That's number 39 in the country. They've got the best roster offensively in the country, and I don't think it's close. OC is still Kevin Wilson, but we all know this is Ryan Day's offense. It, it's the best offense in the country. You got Stroud at quarterback. You got Travion Henderson at running back. Uh, you got Smith and Jigba and Harrison Jr. at, at wide receiver, et cetera. What about the offensive line, though? You got three starters back. Offensive line was pretty good, I guess. They weren't as good run blocking as they were pass blocking. Uh, they were number three in havoc rate allowed, but number 36 in stuff rate. So, yeah, I'm, I'm curious what the offensive line will look like this year. They were number one in passing PPA, but only number 37 in rushing PPA. I think they're going to let Travion Henderson loose a little more this year. And, of course, they got a whole slew of running backs behind him in that core. Uh, it showed, as far as what the offensive line was good at, they were number 110 in the country in rushing percentage. So they, they just decided to let it fly. And I don't blame them. When you got wide receivers like that, I mean, you, you better go ahead and roll with it. I do expect a little bit more balance this year because you there are going to be times where you need to get third and one. And and I think they want to have experience doing that. So the schedule does set up for them to, you know, there, there's tough tests. Don't get me wrong. You got Notre Dame at home in, in week one. You got Arkansas State and Toledo at home. And then you got Wisconsin at home. So you got two pretty tough games in the first four weeks. But all of them are at home. Like, I... I think they're going to be fine. Like, I think this team is just absolutely banana. I think they are double-digit favorites in every game. Every game. Uh, as far as the defense, Jim Knowles comes over, takes over the defense from Oklahoma State. Uh, he's replacing Coombs, of course. Uh, the secondary, number 92 passing success rate allowed, number 50 in havoc rate. Uh, they weren't great at stopping the pass. They weren't, I mean, they were better at stopping the run. But when you went up against a really, really strong running team like Michigan, I mean, they just got blown off the ball. It was kind of the same thing with, with Oregon early. The biggest problem for them last year was the lack of physicality at the line of scrimmage. I mean, there's obvious talent here. I mean, you look at that roster and, and tell me that these are not guys that you expect to be really good. They just could not get stops at all. They were number 123 in the country in red zone touchdown rate allowed. I mean, how in the world does an Ohio State defense – it, it's partly scheme, and it's partly not being able to develop guys. Well, with Knowles coming in, you can develop. You've got a guy in there that understands what it means to take a guy from here and move him up to way beyond there. So I expect big things from Knowles. I don't know if I expect it all in year one. It, it takes a little while for his defenses to really catch on. you got 11 players back that had 350-plus snaps. One is a transfer, so you got 10 that are in the Ohio State system. But when you got a new defensive coordinator, uh, coordinator coming in with a whole new scheme, all new terminology, everybody's kind of starting on the same footing, whether you're a transfer or not. My question is, how important is Tanner McAllister, the Oklahoma State safety, um, how important is he to Knowles' defense this year? Like, what can we expect from the secondary? 
because I mean they were number ninety two in passing success, uh, success rate allowed. Like you, you need to do better. You got to figure out a way to uh, to keep other teams off the board. Huh. Projected favorites in twelve games. There's not a single toss up. Not a single game that will be within single digits uh, as far as the spread is concerned. I mean, this team is just loaded. The keys to the season here. You're going to need underclassmen to play key roles. Defensive line lost three of their top five, and and that line did get pushed around at times. How quickly can Knowles come in and fix it? That's one of the keys. Other key, offense is basically going to have no issues. Turnover margin was awesome. They were number 14 in turnover margin last year. The kicker, Noah Ruggles, went 20 of 21 on field goals. Offense was number 40 in field position. The defense was number one. Like, special teams should be great. There's not really a weakness here. I mean, the win total is 10.5. It's juiced to the over at minus 220. You you normally don't see that. Once it gets to about 220, you see that win total jump up to 11. It, it'll get there eventually. Uh, I, I don't see a loss on this schedule at all. I've got them going 12-0. and 0. I, don't, I don't see anybody that can beat them, and that includes at Penn State. Like, I, I expect big things from Penn State this year. I just don't see them even close to what Ohio State is. Not anywhere close. Uh, this is my Big Ten champion. I, this is a revenge tour for last year, and, you know, another year for Stroud in that offense. I think they're going to be awesome. I think really, really big things. So... Big uh, big stuff there, for sure. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.